Hey, everybody, this is Brian back with another episode of Grief to Growth. And today I've got with me Phil Webster. Um, what if what, what if mystical experiences are real? What if inspiration, instinct, and ingenuity are the same as intuition, divination, and clairvoyance? Phil's written a book called Letting Glow, and it's an adventure into mediumship and takes a deeper look at how, the, how we experience things like time, consciousness, and our relationship to our higher self. All the stuff we like to talk about here on Grief to Growth. It's a profoundly personal account of grief during the global COVID-19 pandemic, and it aims at finding solace and hope by connecting with our intuition. And he says that simple changes in thinking, meditation, exercises, and shifting our perspectives on everyday reality can transform our lives into ones of intense purpose and deeper connection with all that is. Now, Phil himself is a writer, he's an author, and he's a spiritual teacher. And after living abroad for 20 years, he returned to the UK where he resides now, and he ventured into acting. He's since gone on to appear in movies alongside people like Sylvester Stallone, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Elle Fanning, among others. Phil lost his mother in 2021 and realized he had been dismissing spiritual calls to action his entire life. And he writes about that in his book, again, Letting Glow. Phil has since trained with indigenous shamans from North and South America, as well as world-renowned mediums like James Van Prague, Gordon Smith, and Claire Broad. He's also studied female spirituality in the Middle Ages at the University of Barcelona and is a trained meditation teacher as well as a personal trainer. So with that, I want to welcome Phil to Grief to Growth. Hi, Brian. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, yeah, that always sounds like such a lot. <laughs> but uh, most of those things, they, they just came from never knowing what I wanted to do with my life. So it's <laughs> just stacking these things up along the way. That's kind of the way I find life works. You know, it just, yeah. it, it, you, we never know what path we're going to take to get to where we are. And I feel like that we do take the path that's the right one for us. So you you talk about, you had some, I guess, spiritual experiences early on in your life. What was it that finally triggered you to to awakening, I guess, for lack of a better word? Well, there, there were a couple of things along the way, um, which sort of came to light in hindsight of, of what happened around my mum passing, um, which is kind of really the the main um, catalyst for, for writing the book and which really sent me down this path completely. Mm -hmm. So um, just, yeah, just to straight off with that, um, we'd just been through the, through the pandemic uh, 2020 and we all know about that. And my mum lived in a place called the Isle of Wight, which is uh, an island which is uh, south of England. And it's a good few hours away from where I'm based in London. And and I was adhering to the government guidelines and all that kind of stuff. And I was seeing her where I was allowed to and, and you know, keeping away when we wasn't supposed to. And I hadn't seen her for a couple of months at this point. She was supposed to come to London for Christmas. But then once again, uh, there was a new variant of COVID or something. And, and we didn't end up seeing each other for Christmas. So over this whole year, she sort of grown increasingly lonely, somewhat depressed. She was 76 years old and had uh, various age-related health problems. Mm -hmm. um, but we would we would FaceTime every day. And on this particular day, it was about two weeks into 2021. And I'd already spoke to her a couple of times that day. And again, we were in a lockdown. Uh, and, and this was quite late at night when I had this conversation with her. It was like 9, 30, 10. And just to, just to sort of give a little bit of um, perspective around this, um, we didn't have any family there on the Isle of Wight. She was very much on her own. And, and it's a very rural place. So I kind of knew all of the, the neighbors and people like that. And again, just to sort of stress, we were in lockdown. Um, and then she answered the call this night. And as she sort of clicked on the screen and, and I saw her lean into the call, she had a phone charging on the floor. Um, there was a man leaning in from the other side of the screen. And I was kind of taken aback, you know, there wasn't supposed to be anyone there. And, and she was always alone when I called her. And, um, and, and I saw him long enough that I could describe him. He had thinning gray hair, glasses, looked like he was maybe late 60s, something like that. And, um, and as she sort of pulled the phone up, he went out of shot. So I was like, well, who's that? And she said, who's what? And I was like, okay. I, I was like, well, the, the guy, who's the guy? I just saw someone. She's like, no, 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 there's no one here. And just kind of dismissed it. Didn't even sort of take any notice of me. And started talking about her day. And, I, and again, I interrupted her. I said, I said, sorry, mom, you know, but I just saw someone. Are you telling me that, that you're on your own? You know? And she was like, uh, yeah, yeah, there's no one, been no one here all day. And I could always tell when there was someone with her because like over the years, it used to drive me nuts when I was a teenager, especially if someone was with her and I tried to have a phone call, she'd like turn on all these airs and graces and, and it would be impossible to have a conversation with her, you know, just be like, okay, come on, just, just be yourself. But um, she wasn't doing any of that. And, and it was a pretty small house that she lived in. She wasn't acknowledging anyone else. And, and we spoke for a, about 45 minutes. And I thought, well, 
I must have been mistaken. So I, I just kind of dismissed it as some sort of glitch on the screen or, or something. Obviously, that isn't really a thing, you know, with um both had iPhones. And um and I, I just left it and and I went to bed that night and then the next morning I got a phone call from a neighbor. They couldn't get in the house and, and my mum had passed away. She'd had a heart attack. Mm. So yeah, the I mean obviously the initial grief was what it is and and uh, i went through all of that but at the back of my mind i was like well what was all that you know are, are we talking ghosts here are we talking spirit guides or and and that, that wasn't something that i was into into at all or, or really interested in um and then yeah as the months went on i kind of gradually opened up to this idea that that was the, the most logical explanation to me was that that was something letting me know that my mum was about to pass hmm. So do you have any idea who who it was to this day? Well, that's the thing, you know, he didn't he didn't look like a family member. I mean, I lost touch with my dad when I was 18. Um at a stretch it could have been him, you know, um at, at the age he might have been if he's mm-hmm. if he was still around. Um I've no idea. I'm assuming he's not. Um he he was quite a heavy drinker and he had one lung, he still smoked and and then there was covid, so I mean if he <laughs> I shouldn't like sort of not 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 to make light of it, but if he made it through that then you know that I I wouldn't have thought so. Sure. Um I mean I I I ended up writing in my book that I that I sort of thought that it was possibly him, but I I just don't know, you know. And and like I say um I didn't really sort of get any comfort out of it. It was just like okay, that happened and I would tell people about it. And and depending on which side of the fence people were, you know, people would be saying, well, it was grief. And I'd be like, well, it, it wasn't grief because it was before the fact, you know? Right, right. And then, um, and then I would meet people that say, well, yeah, that was, that was clearly your spirit guide or your mom's spirit guide. And somebody letting you know that they were, they were there for her, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I, I ended up going that route. Okay. And so, oh, I, first of all, I want to say, I'm really sorry about your, your mother. I know that had to be a, a tremendous Thanks, shock. Yeah. 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 So, um, and before this, you were an actor. You've you've done several things. So I know you've been an actor and you're a trainer. So what were you doing at the time? So at the time, um, I'd I'd come back to the UK in 2017 um, after living abroad for 20 years or so. And and when I came back, I settled in London with my partner. And I thought, if I was really honest with myself, what would I love to do? And, And I'd always been obsessed with movies. And I thought, well, the logical way to get into that would be perhaps acting. I don't have any experience in film directing or editing or anything like that in my 40s. Um, so I went to drama school and very quickly got a few small parts. Um, but I, I use the word like actor very loosely when I refer to myself about it. You know, I'll literally walk on, say a line and walk off again. And that and that's me done, you know. Um, but it was good. You know, it paid the bills for a few years. And I, I must admit, my attention's really gone away from it now. Uh, mm. since writing the book and and kind of the path that i'm taking now mm-hmm. i feel that there are uh, there are a lot of egos on film sets which is kind of to be expected and um i, I feel like that's not really the environment that i'm leaning towards these days you know mm-hmm. so but, um, after, yeah but uh, sorry so after your your mother passed tell me what was what was your your journey like then you because you eventually ended up with shamanism and etc but what was your journey like after your mother passed yeah, so I, just talking about the acting thing, I was um, scheduled to start immediately on uh, one of these big Marvel superhero movies. It was um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, it was called. And um, and I've been waiting for it for months. It had been a really quiet year because of COVID. And, um, and it started like two days after my mum passed. And I thought, well, I'm just going to do it because it'll, mm. it'll keep me busy and I need the money as well. You know, the, the expense that, that comes up all around losing somebody as um i'm sure a lot of your listeners know is just something else um so i just kind of got on with it and i I barely spoke to anyone for two months i think on set you know i just kind of had my head down it was covid so we were all kind of separated um anyway and i just kind of buried my head in books that i'd read years before i kind of reread some books that i'd read when i was younger um and and I would say that they were sort of like a very soft introduction towards spirituality. I was reading things like Neil Donald Walsh and, and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, kind of the the broader sort of picture, and not really delving straight into into mediumship or anything. But they helped. These books helped. Um, and one day on the on the set, um, I I when I eventually kind of started talking to people, I, I spoke to this young lady, and and she I told her the story that I just told you, and she said, "Well, you should ask for a sign." You know, and I was like, well, I kind of thought of this, but I, 
almost didn't want to. I was like, what if I ask for one and, and I don't get one, you know? Right. Um, so just to sort of ramble on a little, a little bit, we just moved into a new apartment during the time I was filming this thing. And I had a day off and, um, and I was putting away a bunch of Blu-rays, right? I'm kind of obsolete now, but I've got a stack of them all in a box. And, um, and I was putting them very methodically away in a very geekly order of, of and I'd, and I'd got these films, these superhero Marvel things. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and while I was doing this, I was like, oh yeah, okay, let's do this. And I was like, all right, mom, if you're around, give me a sign. Right. And, um, and I, and I sort of carried on tidying up. And as I put these Blu-rays away, I noticed that one was missing. And the one that was missing was Doctor Strange. So that was the original movie to the sequel that I was working on. Hmm. And I thought, well, all right, that's kind of odd. I didn't really attribute it to me asking for a sign at that point. So anyway, I was just kind of annoyed that it wasn't there. And then I went about tidying the flat. And then later in the day, I came across a, a stack of books. And on the top of the stack of books was this Blu-ray, Doctor Strange. And I, and I was like, well, that's just really odd. That that should have been in the box with the rest of them. And then I looked at the, the book underneath the, the Blu-ray was poking out, and the author's name was Maureen, which was my mum's name. And then the title of the book underneath that one was poking out part of it, and it said Living. So I've got Doctor Strange, Maureen, and Living. And I thought, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Mm-hmm. Is that, you know, uh, depending on which way you look at things. I was still kind of somewhat cynical about the stuff at the time. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that came up pretty quickly, and and um, and things tended to follow on from that. So I understand you had some paranormal experiences. So tell me about some of those. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that that was really the biggest one, and I and I truly, yeah. at the, the, this point, I've settled on the idea that that was, you know, um, a, a spirit guide of of some form, uh, mm-hmm. let, let him on, letting me know that my mum was about to pass. Um, if that hadn't happened that that evening, I wouldn't have wrote this book. We wouldn't be talking. It just sent me on this whole different so trajectory. That was what actually triggered you to to go on the journey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You know, I just kept going back to that. Well, like, who was that guy? You know, um, but yeah, and, and it kind of made me reevaluate other things that had happened over the years. So when I was a kid, I remember stuff used to happen around the house, um, things moving, stuff like that. And and you know, as a kid, that was kind of like exciting. And 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 then, and then as I grew older, I thought, well, did those things really happen, or was that just like I was into that stuff? You know, it was like watching Ghostbusters in the eighties or something. And mm-hmm. you know, and and mm-hmm. And I sort of doubted it all. And I remember um, in my teenage years, I, I came across this term uh, astral projection and read up on it and tried to invoke it. And I had this experience, um, which kind of freaked me out. And and again, as years went by, I thought, I oh, don't know, did that really happen? You know, or was it just like wishful thinking? Maybe I was dreaming or something like that. Um, although everything that I read about it afterwards kind of confirmed that that was the experience that I'd had um but I, I would put all these things to bed you know um and then something in my mid-30s very profound um and, and this is kind of weird talking about this because i'm talking years apart right you know mm-hmm. like in the five years in the middle i'm just living regularly paying the bills not thinking about any of this kind of stuff um but in my mid-30s i remember having this very sort of very profound experience um where i'd kind of i, I was living a pretty hedonistic lifestyle at the time i was running bars and nightclubs in helsinki in finland and i was kind of like very self-absorbed and just not really thinking about anyone else's business but my own and i remember waking up this one morning and something just kind of and it wasn't like a new thought but something shifted with this thought and, and i just started thinking about time being non-linear you know that all we've got is, is this moment of now and and that's it you know like mm. everything else is just kind of a memory or or a, a thought of what we want to do in the future. But all we really have is now, you know, all the time. And as I sort of contemplated this, something shifted. And it was as though suddenly I were outside of myself, like observing my thoughts, almost like a, a depersonalization experience, I, I suppose that is what I've kind of come to learn since. And it was terrifying. Something shifted in me. And, and I can't really emphasize how terrifying it was uh, all of a sudden sort of reality just fell away you know out of nowhere and 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 linear time just seemed absurd and and my whole existence at that point did also so this is going kind of out there um but i was like well okay what the heck's this you know and i, and I went outside and i just tried to walk it off and it just didn't stop mm-hmm. and and, it, and it's really hard to describe it and it was at the time i was trying to tell my work colleagues and and friends and people were just kind of glazing over being like okay sure you know like i sounded completely nuts 
Um, but it was it was truly terrifying, and 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 it was just like now, 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 all the time. I couldn't just sort of drift off, think, well, what I'm going to eat for dinner later, or what did I do last night? It was just like this hyper awareness that just didn't stop. Interesting. And people talk about yeah, like like you know, people talk about trying to attain that, right? Like right. you know, live in the moment of now. But this was like that times a thousand, and um, and I s- s- truly started doubting for my sanity, you know. And it kept going on; it went on for weeks, just didn't let up. And I ended up going to a doctor who I, I explained all this to as best I could, and they started using words like psychosis, which just amplified this terror. You know, I, I'd never mm-hmm. thought that that was on the cards for me. Um, and they gave me a bunch of meds, like anti-anxiety pills, which didn't touch it at all. Uh, sleeping pills, which would like knock me out. And then I'd wake up and the whole thing would just start over again. And and I think the best way I could describe it was like, I was it was almost like I was hanging on to like a slippery bar by my fingertips and just about keeping a grip on reality, essentially. It, it just felt like I was, I don't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I, I went to see another doctor because I wasn't happy with the psychosis diagnosis. And he said the same thing. And um and eventually, after a couple of months of this, I, I I started thinking, well, this just isn't. If this is the way my brain works now, I'm I'm out of here, you know. And and I don't mean to take this down a dark path, but I didn't see any tragedy in that, you know. I thought this just doesn't work. I, I can't function properly like this. And mm-hmm. um and I ended up going to see a, a psychiatrist. And what attracted me to this guy was that he was also a hypnotist. So I went there and I was like, okay, you know, hypnotize this away, right? I just just make it yeah, stop. Yeah. And he explained to me it didn't didn't work like that. He said, you know, we need an anchor point and, and it doesn't really sound like you've got one. And you know, and and but he said, um, you know, he said, I believe that what you're having is is, is an awakening. Mm. And I was like, Well, whatever. I was like, just make it stop. Right? I just want to get back to the herd. I want to get on with work. And and he started using words like uh mystic and and talking about shamanic sickness and all these things I'd never heard of before. I, w- I wasn't interested in any of that. I was just like, just make it stop. And, and he gave me a couple of meditations, really powerful, but kind of basic meditations. And and I started practicing these daily. And very gradually, I kind of came back um, to, to, you know, wh- wh- where I wanted to be and just getting on with life. So, yeah, so that was a long-winded story. But I kind of, again, once I got through it, and I, I got to say, I came out of it a lot humbler. I feel like my ego was just smashed to pieces, you know, when I was kind of doubting for my sanity. And I, and I did come out of it um, just through these meditations um, on a daily basis. And and uh, and it kind of made me stop sweating the small stuff, which resulted in moving back to the UK, exploring acting, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't really look at it as a mystical event until, again, what happened around my mum passing and then everything else that I've kind of learned about made me look at this as though, okay, every few years, something would pop up like that, you know, and that was a particularly extreme one. But yeah. it seemed like something had been tapping me on the shoulder like the whole time. And and I feel that now, you know, after doing various things like, you know, for, for work and this and that, I feel like I finally, you know, found the path that I was possibly always supposed to be on. Yeah, well, I thank you for telling that. And I think it's really interesting. And, and for, for people that are younger, possibly listening, because life doesn't make sense as we're going through it. I forget who said it, it was a philosopher said that, you know, it's like, life can only be understood living back or looking backwards, we have to live it look, moving forward. And we mm-hmm. do, we as we look back, we find these events, and we put we put together the pieces of the puzzle, and we can see how they, they make sense. Um, I also think it's fascinating you talking about that. I've been reading a lot about uh, time is nonlinear. Time doesn't exist. You know all this kind of stuff, and trying to wrap my brain around it, which we really can't do. Um, mm. I think our, our brains just don't work that way. And you know, I could totally with you know that, that book, The Power of Now. Everybody wants to live in the now, so we think. Um, so it's interesting that you had that experience, and it, you know, it's yeah, I, I didn't. <laughs> not ple- not pleasant. It wasn't pleasant. It, it was. I've I've never actually read that book. I, I've I've heard snippets of of him talking, and, and I'm like, oh yeah, well, I know all about that. Um, mm-hmm. But it was out of nowhere. It was just like it was such a shock. It wasn't something I was exploring or anything, and it, and it came so powerfully, and just altered everything, you know. Um, but again, in hindsight, the way I was going about my life at the time, I wasn't wasn't, wasn't terrible, but I wasn't the greatest, you know human being on the planet and 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 it really made me take stock of everything and and uh, and started treating people nicer started treating myself nicer and um it kind of yeah it, it definitely created a big shift 
Yeah. So after so after your the passing of your mother and you're and you're starting to um, open up to these spiritual things and you have the signs, um, what made you decide to start studying mediumship? So I just into moved around into this uh, new area that I was mentioning earlier. Um, and I remember walking up and down the street a lot that was just like a couple of blocks away. And I'd never noticed this place before. And one day I just took notice of it. And I probably walked down there 30 times at this point. And there was a small spiritualist church. Um, I don't think you have a lot of them in the We in have a space. few, not, not as many as you do in, in, in England. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd never heard of one before, you know, yeah. and, and uh, that I was like, okay, didn't, didn't really, never heard the term spiritualist church. And I stopped to look at the, the notice board outside. And they said they had a demonstration of mediumship um, every Sunday. And, and I thought, well, kind of interesting, you know, and, and I'd just very recently been starting to look at that stuff. I, I'd come across a book by a medium called Claire Broad, um, which kind of got me thinking about that. And, and, and just so many weird little coincidences, right? And just to just go off the track a little bit, when I started reading this book by Claire, um, she could have been from anywhere in the world. I didn't research her or anything, but her, her story immediately took place uh, in the opening chapter right across the street from where I was living at the time. Hmm. which I thought, well, that's so odd. You know, she could have been from the States. She could have been Australian or, or what have you. But no, the whole thing took place like across the road. I could see what she was talking about. And then a couple of weeks later, I stumbled across this church. And, um, you know, again, in hindsight. <laughs> but I went along to this place and and I was kind of still skeptical somewhat. I, I remember I'd set all of my social media stuff to private. No, I'd, nonsensical completely, because it's not like anyone knew that I was, you know, <laughs> going to show up there. Or, or knew my story or anything. Um, and then I watched this lady work, a, a lady called Janet Neville, and she started walking, working away away around the um, congregation, I suppose you could call it, of maybe 15 people or something. Mm -hmm. And she started telling people about, you know, how uh, describing a house in Scotland, and she claimed that she'd never heard of this place in Scotland, and and this lady was sitting confirming it, like, yeah, yeah, that's my that's my husband's family. You're, you're describing their house. And then she went on somebody else and somebody else. And she was getting like 90% affirmation that people completely understood what she was talking about. And by the time she got to me, I was like, I was like, okay, wow, this is amazing, you know, that, that she's telling people these things. And she got to me and she started talking about a young man. And, and I was like, okay, well, no idea who this guy is. You know, I, I was there hoping to hear from my mom, right? If this yeah. was going to be a real yeah. thing. And and she started talking about this guy and then she started talking as him, which was kind of interesting. I, I didn't know that was coming, you know. Mm -hmm. um, she started sort of referring to me as, as though she was him speaking directly to me and um, and started talking about me being a medium or a voice for spirit, as she she called it. And and again, this wasn't something that was really on my mind at the time. I just only just started sort of looking into this stuff. And I thought, well, that's interesting in itself that you're saying that because I just took an interest in it. Um, but she started saying, yeah, you know, one day you'll be up here and giving people messages. And I was like, okay, cool. But still don't know who this guy is. Um, and then the penny dropped. And and it, I realized that it was somebody that had passed when we were, I was probably 18. He was 20. Um, tragically, he got in with the wrong crowd and overdosed. Um, and then everything that she'd said, you know, fell into place. I was like, oh, damn, she's talking about him, you know? And um and then just right at the end of it, she said, oh, I've, I've got a lady here, uh, like an elderly lady that's recently passed. And I kind of choked up, you know. Um, and she described the, the the situation around my mum passing and and the, her accent changed. Again, this was like a game changer for me because um, this lady, the, the medium, she had a very sort of strong London Cockney accent. Mm. And then it kind of just went to this uh, Northern English accent. Uh, my mum's accent and and she just kind of the language she used although it was a very brief message it was it was my mum speaking to me you know um mm. and it, and it was life-changing i'd say you know this, this uh, hadn't been something that i'd ever looked into before and then i just went along this night and it just yeah it essentially changed my life i would say i'm excited to announce i have a great new resource it's called gems four steps to move from grief to joy and what it is, it's four things that I've found that I do on a daily basis to help me to navigate my grief. And I'm offering it to you free of charge. It's a free download. Just go to my website, www.grieftogrowth.com slash gems, G-E-M-S, and grab it there for free. I hope you enjoy it. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that was your first experience with mediumship. And then yeah. made you decide to start, like, I, I think I can do this. Sorry, I want to do this. Well, it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, because, like, did I start doing it because she said I was going to do it or, or yeah. <laughs> because she suggested it or, or was it on the cards already? And, and I kind of came to the conclusion that, again, there have been all these things along the way. Uh, there was a couple more that we, we might get to. Um, but, yeah, I was like, all right, this seems to be – this seems to be – my thing i don't know like for, for what everything kind of made sense after that you know i've always mm -hmm. kind of i would always want to have deeper conversations with people or you know why is this or what what are we doing here and and typically people wouldn't really be interested and i always used to find it kind of frustrating you know mm -hmm. and um I, I feel like well what more important question is there you know um but i get it you know we've, we've got stuff to get on with and and, and, I, and i've got a lot of friends that are sort of skeptical of this stuff and, and i respect that and i'm not trying to you know, enforce my beliefs on them. Um, but yeah, it, it seems to be, it makes sense to me now. So um, how did you get started in terms of studying? Because uh, you, you studied with some pretty amazing people. Yeah. So um, I'd I finished this book by the medium Claire Broad. And very quickly afterwards, I came across this place called the College of Psychic Studies in London. And, and I did, again, I was like, didn't know there was a place such as, you know, that could yeah, exist. That's called that. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, what is this, like the X-Men school or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and and Claire was the, the the author. She was doing a class there um, pretty much like weeks after I'd finished the book. And I, again, I was like, well, that's a weird coincidence. Um, I'll go along. And, um, and I told Claire pretty much all these stories that I told you when we had a break. And she was the first person that at that point was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that makes perfect sense. You know, that that's your spirit guys trying to get in touch with you. That's this, that's that. And mm -hmm. and the first person that didn't really sort of dismiss this whole thing as just rambling nonsense, you know, and and she has to keep in touch. Um, so yeah, I, I very quickly became like fast friends with her, mm. and took a, a lot of her workshops and classes. And then, you know, in sort of downtime, I, anything else that popped up like Gordon Smith or James Van Prior, I would sort of jump on a a Zoom class with them or something like that. And um, yeah, just try to sort of keep practicing you know uh, and then soon after that i i met another lady that did a um kind of like a, a fortnightly um uh circle like a development developing mediumship circle right uh, which i still go to so yeah just kind of been practicing and so far so good um I, i'm definitely not calling myself a medium at this stage i think it you know just in respect to the people that have done it before me they've told me they've done it seven eight years before they even actually gave a reading you know um mm -hmm. but at least in practice um i've pretty much had a hundred percent success rate uh, so yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah it, mediumship is, is different in the uk than it is here i mean here people they'll take a weekend workshop and they'll go out and they'll start calling themselves a medium and yeah right and yeah. and in, in england it seems like you guys are a lot more serious about developing and and you know uh I, have you do you know have you heard of nikki allen I'm not sure. It might sound familiar. Might sound she's familiar. a she's a medium in England, and she's written a couple of books. And one of her books, she talks about you know going to the spiritualist churches, and they're like, "You haven't been practicing long enough," so they wouldn't even let her yeah. know, let her on the platform. So that that's something I'm very conscious of because you know I've wrote this book and I've read another book straight afterwards that that will be out next year, and and I kind of feel like somewhat like a little bit of a maverick stepping in, saying, "Hey, I'm I'm a medium in in a year, you know, and this is how to do it." And I've kind of like wrote what's worked for me. And in, in theory, the reader could, you know, follow these steps and, and progress as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm also conscious of not upsetting this very traditional, you know, um, uh, long, long history of, of, of spiritualism in, in this country. Like you say, you know, that the, I don't want to sort of be frowned upon um, for, for suggesting that anyone can go out and do this. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I remember seeing a girl one night step into the church she she said she'd been doing it for a couple of months and she just gave you know confirmation after confirmation of people every, everyone's hand was going up and mm -hmm. all agreeing with what she was saying it was you know she seemed as good as the ones i've seen doing it for years so i don't know may, maybe there's just kind of a, a traditionalist hierarchy so I'm, I'm not sure yeah well i think it's kind of like uh and i've been I've been talking to mediums for several years now seven or eight years i mean you know and so what i've come to the conclusion it's kind of like people that have skill to play music there's some people that are prodigies, you know, and they can they can pick up a guitar and teach themselves to play. And then there's mm -hmm. someone like me that could study for years and never be any good at all. 
and there's everything right. in between. Right. Right. So there's there's nothing that says that you have to be a medium for 10 years before you can be good, but it's probably mm. the exception rather than the rule. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like I say, just very uh, cautious about about stepping on any sort of traditionalist toes, because there are people around that, that I've met um, that really studied with people from 100, you know, that were around 100 years ago. You know, they kind of met them at the tail end of their lives, learned from these people that were the, the pioneers of this stuff. And mm -hmm. then like two generations away, you know, it, it's, it's kind of really close to the, to that um, traditionalist element. So yeah, I'm kind of always trying to be respectful for it, you know? Yeah, I think that's great. I think it's great that you take it seriously, but also I would encourage you to uh, be confident in, in your abilities. Cause I, I've, again, I've, I've known lots of mediums. Uh, some are, some are just natural born. Uh, I was talking to one just the other day. She just, She's just always been, she's always seen spirit and it's always been with her. And then I know people mm -hmm. who have developed, you know, in their thirties or forties or even fifties. And it took them, you know, years to develop after that. So it's, it's everything in between. Yeah. 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 No, well, I mean, just sort of to bring it sort of full circle. I mean, it, it's very much helped me um, with dealing with the loss of my mom. It's been, well, yeah, it was January, uh, 2021. So, you know, we're approaching somewhat the three year mark and I feel like it it's somewhat accelerated the healing process for me. I, I'm not sure. Of course, we all go through this at, at our own pace. Sure. Um the first year was unbelievably hard, you know. Um I I I, I wasn't prepared for how hard it was. Um and, and and you know, a lot of people lost people around that period of time. And and I'd I a friend of mine had lost both of his parents, or, or a few friends actually. And, you know, a couple of them are like, well, you know, it's cool. I'm, I'm moving on, you know, six months later. And I'm like, I, I can't even comprehend that, you know, that, that mm -hmm. I, I wanted to hurt. I wanted to feel all of it. And, um, but that being said, um, learning about this stuff was a very sort of mixed bag of emotions and writing the book too, because um, as much as I was pouring my grief into it, and it definitely helped to sort of write about it. Um, I was learning about these amazing things, you know, and they were happening almost weekly uh, as I, as I explored mediumship. So, yeah, it was kind of a very bittersweet journey, you know. Um, but right. but it definitely helped. Definitely right. helped. So have you been have you been in contact with your spirit guide since since then? Are you are you making connection with them? Yeah, I, I'm still learning to meet them. It's, it's kind of funny to have like a few years ago I would have dismissed this whole thing, you know. Um I, I would have probably been intrigued, but I wouldn't have taken it that seriously. But to talk about it now, uh, yeah, you know, I I've met a couple of them. Um I feel like I'm still meet, uh, on my way to sort of get into know more. Um, definitely the last couple of months since the book's come out um, and, and talking about promoting it and sort of thinking about all that stuff, it's kind of made my practice suffer somewhat. I haven't been meditating as much as I should and and and, and all these kind of things. And I can see it's kind of gone to the wayside a little bit, but um, mm. I plan to get back to it very, very soon. Um, and I think that's fine. I think that, you know, we, we, we're also, we've also got stuff to get on with. We need to pay the rent and, you know, we've got practical obligations and we are having a physical experience. So I think that it all happens in its own time. Um, but yeah, I, I initially the first year or two or the, yeah, up until recently, um, I felt very much connected and, and, um, yeah, it, it, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and just being able to sort of differentiate between my thoughts and what I believe is coming from, from them yeah well i i know you said you've been you feel like you've been guided to write a trilogy to write three books mm. um so mm. that's i assume that's coming from your guides or where is that coming from yeah definitely so the second book um which is goes way out there it's kind of less about me and more about the the bigger picture you know mm -hmm. um I, i've pretty much to an extent told you my whole story as, as things around you know that have happened to myself so I don't, you know, I don't want to just write a bunch of books saying, um, I mean, I've, I've read books like this that uh, where mediums are talking about, um, you know, confirmations that they give to people or, or, or readings that they give to people. And it's kind of a list of that. I, I, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I don't want to just be like, and then this person said that, and then they said that, and then they agreed that. And while those things did help me um, initially, I feel like there's a bigger thing going on here that we mm -hmm. should look into. And, and I feel that the second book, 
I feel that half of it wasn't from me, you know. Um, I'd look back at it and I'd think, okay, that's that's way smarter than me. I'm not. I wouldn't have come up with that, you know. When I read it now, um, I I I I couldn't um, sort of off the top of my head talk about some of the things that I wrote in there. I, I truly believe that it that it's come from something mm-hmm. higher than me. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so I've left it at that. I, I haven't made a start on the third book yet, and I'm just trusting that it'll come to fruition when when it does you know okay so um in in your in your first book the book that's out now there's i know there's some talk about like meditation and exercises and things that people can do so it's more than just your story right so tell me about what the other parts of the book are yeah definitely um i just started writing about what really worked for me um in terms of meditation and that was really a game changer from back before my mom passing or anything like that Mm -hmm. kind of looking at it as a more sort of practical mental health practice um that that i learned about but then as i started exploring for mediumship it seems that meditation is truly the the doorway um to to open open us up to that and and one of the things i like to sort of talk about is that uh and there are probably a way way smarter uh, terms to use than the way I'm going to describe it. But as uh, as though we've got like a backseat driver, you know, which is our consciousness, which is observing our thoughts, right? So you know, we we sort of we react to our thoughts and respond to them, and and everything comes from thought essentially, right? You know, um, and and I really sort of ran with that idea in the book that when we can sort of take a step back and and don't get attached to the emotions that are, that are sort of we're constantly being bombarded with this and that, you know, um, for example, one, one thing I always say is kind of, you, you step outside and you're on your way to do something. And you see somebody in a red t-shirt and you know, that kind of triggers some memory of somebody at school that bullied you in a red t-shirt or something like that. And you got that going on while you're trying to do what you're trying to do. And it's just nonstop. Right. And I feel that meditation is really beneficial to being able to, to step back from all that and just taking a moment to yourself and then recognizing that we're not, our thoughts you know we're the, we're something that's uh, internal external to that I'm not, I'm not sure about that yet but um but yeah the, there's a huge benefit in it and i believe that again learning about mediumship when you can sort of separate that then when something else comes in then you recognize it as something else you know okay that's not part of that whole you know passing train of thoughts over there this is something mm-hmm. that's coming from somewhere else mm-hmm. and still you're the one at the back that's um taking all this information in so yeah I, I find it fascinating and and yeah the the meditation seems to be really um that seems to be something that people are really um have responded well to with, with the book yeah i think it's really interesting i i'm a big proponent of, of meditation i know a lot, a lot of people push back against it because they say well i can't do it or they don't understand mm. it so do you give some practical tips for people that are struggling with that yeah definitely i i did one the other day actually um uh, really very gradually i've been going to these sort of spiritual um uh festivals and stuff like that that are, that are a thing here um mm-hmm. and i did one the other day a lot of people showed up I, I would have been happy with one and i think about 60 people showed up but i kind of um there was a lot going on around us it was a big sort of festival there was drums playing somewhere and people doing this and that and i, and I think that you know, we do, we have this sort of illusion that that we have to, you know, be sitting in silence and not get distracted. And kind of, I think it's fine to get distracted as long as you just bring yourself back. Um, so with that meditation that we did that day, I was like, okay, well, let's use these sounds, you know, to sort of ground us to this moment. Because I think that's also key, you know, just being present in the moment. Um, mm-hmm. Nothing as terrifying as, as I talked about earlier, but just being conscious that we're right here, right now. Yeah. Um, focusing on the breath always come back to the breath and you know if you do hear a dog barking in the distance just use it you know be like okay that that's me right now that's keeping me right here while i you know sort of go through this um and you know distractions are going to come up it's it's inevitable um but just yeah always come back to the breath always come back to the present moment yeah, I think that's it's great that you do that and and describe for people. Um, and and it's kind of I was kind of smiling there when you talk about coming back to the present moment, thinking about your terrifying experience of yeah, yeah. not being able to get out of the present moment. But there's there's that balance in terms of being a human. You know, as I said, I'm I'm struggling right now with this concept of because I'm reading all these books telling me that time is an illusion and there's really no past and there's really no future, and it's a, it's a concept that we that I struggle with, but you've had the, the flip side of that experience. Yeah. I mean, it, it was so terrifying, but then I've had, I've had things since uh, around mediumship. Like for example, I shouldn't really tell all the 
tales that are in the book. But for example, there was I was struggling with this whole mediumship at one point, and and I was begging for you know I'd, I'd had signs, but I wanted more. And I was at my mum's house. Um, you know, she'd been gone a few months, and and I still sort of kept hold of the house just to sort of be there and be around her things and and grieve. Mm. Um, and I remember going to the beach one night, and I was like, okay, well, you know, if this is a thing, if you, if you whoever you is um wants me to do this then give me i need more you know um and and this was like a, a pretty crazy experience i have to say and and i had settled in this spot on the beach and and i was crying i, I was very much missing my mom i probably had a bit to drink that night and and i started kind of just like yelling i was this like proper freak out moment i was like all right you know just give me something if if this is what you want me to do you know and i'm talking spirit guides here and I'd been sat there for a while and I was kind of given up and I turned to my left and there was a, there was a cafe right next to me and there was a chalkboard on the cafe. And th- this is, I still don't really get this. Like, um, and on the cafe chalkboard was my name. It said, Phil wrote in chalk and all around it, it said, hi, like, hi, 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 as in, as in like the greeting. And I was like, okay, here, there we go again. You know, I'm asking for a sign. And there's my name and and a bunch of like sort of greetings around it, and 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 I'd gone there before the fact, right? So I'd gone mm. there before I, I was kind of asking for the sign and stuff like that. So the whole thing, you know, about time being non-linear, and maybe on the other side that that's probably the case. Um, that they kind of I'm assuming that's recognized my plight, taking me to the place that was going to give me the you know the the comfort that that I'm on the right track. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, so can you explain to me, because I, I know that I was reading your your notes, and one of the things you said that really intrigued me, that you said that inspiration, instinct, and ingenuity are the same as intuition, divination, and clairvoyance. So what do, what do you mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, and this is something I say a lot, um, but I, I really, I, I believe it's true. You know, people talk about having a gut feeling, or we, we say we can't put our finger on something, or we talk about walking into a room and cutting the air with a knife where someone's had an argument. And, you know, we pick up on these things. Mm-hmm. And we all agree that this is a, a real thing, you know, no matter if you're skeptical of, of any spiritual stuff or not. But then, yeah, if you start using words like clairsentience or clairaudience or, or, or any of anything like that, or, or, or a sixth sense, then people typically just dismiss you or look at you like you're nuts. But I think it's, simply a, a question of semantics right we're talking about the same things we're talking about the the same moments of knowing that we get but but it, we're just using different language you know it's the same stuff right and and i and i feel that again since learning about meditation learning about mediumship i've really become more in tune with intuition and and my honest you know sort of authentic self um yeah i i, I think we all have them it's just we just use different terms for them yeah, I think that's a really good point. We we do shy away from from certain terms, and uh, we've all had the experience. You know, for example, you think about somebody, and the phone rings, and it and it's them, and yeah. you know, we just we chalk that up to coincidence and, and things. We've I mean, we've all had experiences like that. Yeah, that's it. And and you know, even some of the more sort of profound, uh, I would say, sort of mystical spiritual experiences, they somehow I, I feel that they don't quite sit in your memory the same way as everyday practical stuff you know so when something does happen like like me sitting on the beach and there's my name wrote on the cafe or or i've had a couple of other things uh one with my partner who she's very much on the fence about this stuff she kind of it's kind of good she keeps me grounded somewhat um Mm -hmm. but she's very sort of um leaning more towards agnostic i suppose um we had an experience together that, that that was very overwhelming and profound and and she was like okay what what is this you know what the, there was something physically sensate like going on something was mm-hmm. with us sure and, and um and i said well this is what i'm talking about this is exactly what i've been talking about all these months and i know she experienced it and i said after this is done i said you're not going to remember this the same way because it's not like something that comes in through the usual senses it's not something that you can touch or taste or or, or I mean, these things happen as well. But this particular thing that was happened to us, it was more like a knowing or, mm. or, or a, a very odd sensation that was that was happening between us. And um, and afterwards, she kind of was like, "Yeah, well, something happened, but I don't know." You know, I I thought that that thing was going to change everything for her, but it didn't. 
you know, she's still like, well, yeah, something happened, but doesn't mean that I believe in life after death at this point. But, um, you know, but yeah, I, I just to go sort of back again to, to the point, I, I feel that these things don't really sit in our memory the same way as, you know, what we just did uh, this afternoon, you know. Well, you you described something there that I think is very important that we that we kind of dig into a little bit. Because you talked even about some of the experiences you had earlier. We have an experience. It's very visceral. It's very real to us. We, But then over time, our brain talks us out of it. Did exactly. that really happen? Did that yeah. really happen the way I, I felt it happened? And expect, especially when it's a subjective experience, when it's only us, just, yeah. just, just one person seeing it. If two people see it, we we give it more weight. I think that's very interesting about, about our culture too. It's like, if I see something and I describe it to you, then people are like, eh, maybe it happened. But if, if two people describe it, then we 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 give it more weight. But we I think we all talk our tend to talk ourselves out of things like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I I'd still do it myself. And, and I still I've heard of mediums, you know, that, that have been practicing for years saying that they still question it, even though they they get this information like on a regular yeah. basis. They're still yeah. like, I don't know, is it is this real? You know? Um it's kind of weird you know like I, I i and for myself like i know that these things that i'm giving to people i have no idea where it comes from you know i know in theory how it works but i don't know the actual mechanics of it and all you can sort of do is just trust that it that, that it's a thing and, and i think that's really the key and that's probably where a lot of skeptics um sort of point out that 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 that's what's not logical about it. It's like, well, if you start believing in this stuff, then you're, you're going to be looking for it. And then you're going to sort of confirm to yourself because you're actually searching, you know, you know what I mean? So it's, mm-hmm. I, I, I get it. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I had another experience and sorry, I won't keep rambling on about stories that for me was amazing. Uh, and, and I, I, even, it was a, again, a paranormal somewhat experience. Um, I saw an orb and I caught it on camera and I said to my friend, I was like, look at this, amazing right and he was like yeah i i don't know man he was like oh, maybe maybe it's a light from outside and i'm like no it's not okay and, and i'm not in the habit of lying about these things you know what i mean it's like we've known each other for right 30 years you know like when have i ever come up with something like this you know right and and, and but still he's like yeah i don't know i don't know it just doesn't just doesn't sit right with him you know well, there is, um, and this is, I've just realized this to myself. I'm a, I'm a very rational person. I'm, I'm a chemical engineer by training. And, and, and I've realized just, this was just a couple weeks ago. I'm reading all these books by physicists and, um, you know, philosophers and everything, trying to understand how things work. And I think it's fine to, to try to understand how things work. I think that's part of being human. But the problem is we tend to dismiss things if we don't understand how they work. And what mm-hmm. I find with the what the materialist people say is like, well, since we don't understand how mediumship works, therefore it can't be true. I don't understand how near death experiences happen, therefore they can't be true. And I was just really recently hearing Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about like, well, you're describing something that we can't measure, we can't see, blah blah blah, and that's just that's that's imaginary. And I'm reading this book; they're talking about dark matter and dark energy, which nobody knew existed until 1998. Mm-hmm. We still can't, we still don't know what they are. The physicists just tell us that they it has to be there because of the way the universe works, but we don't know what it is. We can't detect it. We don't have, but, and that's fine. <laughs> They're like, this is okay. We'll accept dark matter and dark energy, but we won't accept the fact that, that Phil can talk to dead people because we don't understand how it works. Yeah, no, that's it, isn't it? it, it, it I, I've read, um, and I wish I could reel them off now, but I've read, I've read a, of a few um converts from from science that that have really sort of gone down this path and they're talking about science almost as as a as a religion you know that okay Mm -hmm. just they just won't touch it because because it's you know they'll i can't i'm just going to butcher this now but one lady was talking about you know they say well this study has been done on that she's probably talking about one thing that hasn't really been funded and right. someone's been like, uh, oh, doesn't make sense. Okay, it's not a thing. You know, it's just like no one's actually really looked into this. And and uh, a lot of the research, I think she was saying, showed that uh, you know, in terms of people saying they've got clairvoyant abilities or or, or remote viewing or, or all these kind of, you know, things that sound kind of nuts, that there's a lot, there's more evidence that is for it than against it, you know, mm-hmm. but nobody wants to touch it because it just, it just calls everything into question, you know, so what can you do <laughs> well it's it, i was listening to um 
Julie Beischel, who's uh, she's done research on mediums. She has one runs this thing called the Windbridge Institute, and they've actually brought mediums in, and they've done quadruple blind or quintuple blind studies, and and there's they've they've eliminated all the things the skeptics say: cold reading, hot reading, you know, bias. All those all those things they've eliminated all those things, and they've proven that some mediums can pass you know these tests. But she said something I hadn't heard before. I thought this was really interesting. Some people's brains, when they hear something new, the front part of their brain like lights up and they get really curious about it. And they're like, what's that? I want to find out more about that. Other people, when they hear something new, their amygdala lights up, their fear receptors light up. And they're like, oh no, this must be dangerous. We must run away from this. Mm -hmm. And I just heard this like a week ago and I'm like, that's profound to me because there's some of us that say, okay, well, this is new. I don't understand it. Let me find out more about it. And others of us say, well, I don't understand it. Therefore, it's got to be yeah. scary. Yeah, that's that's I like that as well. That's interesting. Um, I, I got a couple of friends that I spoke to recently, and I, I, I feel that some, you know, they're possibly avoiding me because I'm going to go down this road <laughs> with them. And they're, they're like, I just don't want to go there. And and one of them said, well, that you know, that's all great, but that doesn't help me. You know, that doesn't serve my day to day life at all. That's interesting or whatever. But so what you know so what like i've still got to go to work i've still got still got to do this and i've still got to do that and 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 her brain just doesn't go there you know um yeah, yeah so I, again I, and, and you know i respect that and a few years ago if i'd have come across somebody talking like this i'd be like eh, i don't know man that's a bit <laughs> you know it sounds quite out there yeah Yes. And, and, you know, again, I think that goes back to that balance thing. We we can't, we don't, we can't live. We have to live in this world. We have to live the physical, as you pointed out, we have to pay the bills. And so those people are, are correct, but death is something that is the only thing that's universal that we're all going to face personally and for people around us. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, when, when something happens and this is, this is, I find this a lot of people like your mother passing, or losing a child or losing a spouse, that's what kicks us onto that that journey that says, okay, this stuff is important, but that's that's what's really important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and that's it. You know, um I can't imagine I, I I've heard your story and I can't imagine how that must must be. Um I feel that when we when we lose a parent uh, and I say this uh, quite a lot as well, but we, we really lose like the one true witness to our lives, you know, the person, mm. uh, uh, and obviously people have different relationships with the parents. Like I'm not saying that this is across the board. Um, but yeah, that person that's been there since day one. And for me, it felt like stepping into a, an alternate universe. Suddenly, you know, you just yeah. kind of assume that they're always going to be there. And, and, and yeah, back to what you said, we kind of assume that we're always going to be here. It's, it's kind of, it's so odd the, the, the way we've got things set up around death. And yeah, I think it would, you know, be a, a good thing if we could somewhat normalize it more and talk about it. Yes, it's well, it, it's scary. And we don't want to talk about it. And, and, and your friends, you know, I it's it's really interesting. My it's been eight years for me since my daughter passed. And we mm -hmm. just had uh, my wife's 60th birthday party yesterday, uh, two days ago. And our friends were here and they know it's like, okay, this is what I talk about now. This is what's yeah. really interesting. And it was funny because a friend of mine called me over during, during the birthday party. She said, do you want to get philosophical? I said, yeah, always. And she started asking me a question about what was going on with this family and if I believed in soul planning and stuff like that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that, that to me felt really good that she felt comfortable, you know, having that conversation with me. So I think there are people like you and I that are put here to, this is what we're here to do, I think. Yeah, I believe so. I, I, and again, in hindsight, I feel like I, I was always drawn to these things, but I didn't really know where to go. I would always kind of hit a brick wall, you know. It would be mm -hmm. like, um, well, that's really interesting, but we we just don't know beyond that. And I feel that I'm starting to learn something. And, and, and it would be really arrogant to say that that I know <laughs> something more than I did before, I, I suppose. But I feel like, yeah, I'm on the right track at least. Um uh, we i guess we're just not designed to know right and and you know uh, it, it'll sort of figure itself out in the end so where do you see yourself going i know you just said you we don't know because we never know where we're going to go but do you see developing to professional medium or where, where do you see yourself going i'm still on I'm, I'm still on the fence about that i find it fascinating um oh, i've got to be really careful again i don't want to come across as sounding arrogant i feel that you know i'm very much at the start of my journey with mediumship like when i'll give a reading um i'll see somebody i'll be able to 
physically describe them. I'll usually see the circumstances around the passing. And then I'll ask for a message and that will come to me as a, a, a very basic symbol, you know, um, like a ship or something like that. And, and so I feel like it's very rudimentary what I'm offering people, where, mm. whereas I don't feel that I'm at the stage where I could actually give anyone anything hugely beneficial. You know, I feel mm. like I get these three things and then I'm done. Um, or perhaps that's me just sort of selling myself short. I don't know. But um I'm not sure if mediumship uh, working as an actual medium is, you know, my, my sort of final destination. Um, I just feel that it, it's a key to to something bigger, you know, um, definitely the second book, the things that I've wrote on that, like I say, uh, it goes kind of way out there about time and stuff like this. And some stuff that I'm almost apprehensive about people reading um, definitely people that know me that they're, they're going to think I'm okay. He's gone. <laughs> mm. But um but yeah, I, I feel that there's a bigger there's a bigger picture around all this, and and you know one good thing at least we can say is that it does seem to be able to be a bit easier to talk about these things than it was ten years ago or fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, even even skeptical people seem to be somewhat open to at least giving it the time of day, you know, for for a little while, even if they shut it down. Um, I, I think yeah, people can have these conversations a lot more easier than than we used to. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I, there's a couple of things here. I think science, frankly, is catching up with mm. with, with philosophers and 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 the theologians have told us for thousands of years at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, you read, you look at quantum quantum physics, quantum mechanics, quantum theory. Everybody knows what that is now. You're you're mentioning the Marvel movies, and they're exploring a lot of these themes. Um, yeah, like the Doctor Strange movie. When I went to see that, I was like, wow, this is this is a deeply spiritual movie. I, don't, I know that's not what they meant to make, but it is. Yeah, I, I remember I was on a plane and I watched, was it uh, the the um, animated Spider-Man movie uh, from a couple of years ago? Uh, and that I was like, this is this is deep. And like when I was a kid, I was watching Scooby-Doo and they would pull the mask off somewhere. Right, right. And that would be the end, you know. But they, they, they're talking about like multiple dimensions and stuff like that. I was like, really... You know, if that, if that's how kids are thinking these days, I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, and Disney's putting up movies, you know, like Soul. So I think I mm, think what's mm. happening is, it, I, I think people are moving away from religion. So and people tend to mix up religion and spirituality, mm, but mm. people as as we're getting these messages in a non-religious way, uh, people are more open to them. I I I think I think. I think people crave this stuff. I think it's just we, we tend to push it down because society tells us that we need to. So I Definitely. applaud you for being brave enough to put yourself out there. No, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been like I say, it's been a, somewhat of a healing process for me. Um, um, and, and after I'd written the first book, I just felt like I'd learned so much, mm-hmm. and and like I sort of like I feel that my story was done to an extent. Um, and and then I I kind of learned all these amazing things, and I was like, well, I've got another book here, and sort of really went into that. Um, and the bigger picture, it still kind of comes down to my opinion somewhat. So I'm not saying that it's that it's all you know, for want of a better word, gospel, but <laughs> you know, um, it's food for thought, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, your opinion. I'm trying to think how to respond to that. I mean, everything that we write, I guess, is pretty much is from our own point of view. Right. So, mm, mm, and we mm. can share things and hope it, hope it resonates with somebody. But even again, I, I being a, being a scientific person myself and, and realizing that, you know, every new, every new scientific theory is laughed at at first. It's all like, mm. that's crazy. That's insane. You know, quantum, quantum theory was laughed at, you know, the first guy that talked about microbes, he said, you know, I think diseases are caused by these invisible tiny things that are like floating around in the air. They're like, you're, there's no evidence for that, you know? So that's, yeah. it's all laughed at at some point. So um, yeah, I, I, your, your opinion, your experiences. Um, and I, and it, I, I do read a lot of talk to a lot of people. And so I, I see when I look at the commonalities between people say, that's where I see the truth. And there are a lot of people yeah. saying the same things that you're saying now. There, there are people that are putting that message out. That that's a, that's I think that's a hugely important point as well. Yeah, like when I've been looking into this, it's like okay, there are so many of these stories. You know, people talking about near death experiences and and so mm-hmm. many commonalities, and all of them is and how is this just being ignored? You know, like I don't know how many thousands of people talking about the. Uh, you know similar experiences uh, when especially when they've passed and come back again. Mm-hmm. 
they're, they're all the same story essentially you know um there's got to be something to it right right and again people this is why people like us need to keep telling because people think oh near-death experiences there's you know every once in a while people have them it's it's a lack of oxygen to the brain it's a hallucination and there are people that have done research so whenever someone said to me i'm like you need to read this book or you need to look at this yeah. you know, research um mm. because people have actually controlled for for all that and um it's i think the estimates between five and ten percent of the populations had an nd at this point which is literally billions of people on the planet that have had this experience right um, right yeah while... I, I i undershot there with thousands yeah billions. yeah yeah it's, it's 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 yeah. millions and just in the u.s i mean yeah yeah it's, and if you think about worldwide it's, it's billions of people so mm-hmm. um yeah keep you know we need you people like you need to keep putting this out there and and it makes it acceptable to other people and our friends might scoff at us but also one day they'll be they'll be there asking you questions they'll be they'll be calling you over and saying my my mom just died and that's it this has been my experience do you think this was real Mm. no well that's the thing isn't it and 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 just to sort of get back to the grief thing again you really don't know until you know i i I thought i anticipated what what it was going to be like you know and and again losing a parent you kind of you know that that's probably on the cards um Mm. but the experience itself was was nothing that could have prepared me you know uh, it, 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 it's just been profound yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it's something we're all going to go through where like mm, i said we're, yeah. we're and, and the people i know it's it's an unpleasant thought but it's something we're all going to go through might as well be you know prepared um it's mm-hmm. my my way of looking at it mm-hmm. so so phil let people remind people of the, of the name of your book and let people know where they can get it yeah, uh, it's called Letting Glow. Um, so really, was just kind of a play on the on the on the words there of sort of getting through grief and and coming out of it a bit brighter. Um, yeah, it's it's available at all the usual bookshops. Um, if they haven't physically got it, um, you can ask for it. And and it's of course on on Amazon. Um, mm-hmm. Social media wise, I'm most active on Instagram, and I've got a website that I'm probably going to redo. It's not the best, but um, people. Um, have been getting in touch with me through that uh, philwebster.com okay so and it's phil with two l's yeah phil with two l's yeah okay so yeah and i'll put links in the in the show notes i just like to have it in the in the audio too because sometimes people are out walking listening well phil it's been a real pleasure getting to know you uh thanks for being here thanks for doing what you do thanks very very much for having me on I, i've particularly been looking forward to speaking to you like i say after hearing you uh, a few months ago on on another podcast so yeah yeah pleasure speaking with you All right. Well, good luck with the book. We'll talk later. Thank you. Have a good day.